Who are the post-liberals and why do they want a Sunday blue law? Find out today on The Prophetic Eye. They call themselves the post-liberals and they're a rising political voice that is starting to take root in the United States. Not to be confused with liberals, the post-liberals are seeking to carve out a path for conservatives to regain control of the culture by championing Christian principles. Here's a statement from an article entitled, Americans Need a Break, Maybe Blue Laws Can Help. It says, one of the more interesting and consequential developments in politics in recent years has been the emergence of common good conservatives, a small but vocal and largely Catholic group of right-wing thinkers who want to embrace an explicitly religious agenda for lawmaking and policy. If you didn't catch that, then let me repeat it. An explicitly religious agenda for lawmaking and policy. In other words, this group of largely Catholic common good conservatives are very similar to the group of Christians that we covered in a previous video who call themselves Christian patriots or Christian nationalists. And both of these groups have something very important in common, which is that they would like to use the power of the state to push their principles, including blue laws, and more specifically, Sunday blue laws. The post-liberals are definitely a group that we should be keeping a prophetic eye on, as their ideology is clearly in line with what we are warned about in Revelation chapter 13 and the Great Controversy. If you've been keeping up with the Prophetic Eye series, then you know that Revelation 13 highlights a scenario that will lead to something called the formation of the image to the beast. This image represents a shift that will soon take place in society where religious zealots will step forward to take the reins of government, to push forward their view of America, and this course will eventually include mandating a day of worship. This process is clearly laid out on page 573 of The Great Controversy, which says, in the movements now in progress in the United States to secure for the institutions and usages of the church the support of the state, Protestants are following in the steps of papists. Nay, more, they are opening the door for popery to regain in Protestant America the supremacy which she has lost in the old world. This statement is basically saying that a certain class of Christians in this country is following a course that will lead to an image of the Holy Roman Empire being established. It goes on to say, and that which gives greater significance to this movement is the fact that the principal object contemplated is the enforcement of Sunday observance, a custom which originated with Rome and which she claims as the sign of her authority. It is the spirit of the papacy, the spirit of conformity to worldly customs, the veneration for human traditions above the commandments of God that is permeating the Protestant churches and leading them on to do the same work of Sunday exaltation which the papacy has done before them. Amazing. This quote was written over 130 years ago, and yet it sounds like it could have been taken from the headlines today. We've seen this coming for a very long time, and the reality of this critical change in society is getting more and more evident each day. In the past few months, there has been a steady increase in media coverage surrounding the rise of the so-called Christian nationalists. If you haven't seen it, news outlets like MSNBC News, CNN, and BBC have all covered the push from these Christian patriots, but take a look for yourself. I think for conservative Christians, there has been a dawning awareness of the fact that whereas the society basically agreed with us on almost every important issue, I mean, the, the overlap, if you take a Venn diagram, was so overwhelming that outsiders would call the United States a Christian nation. So something's clearly changed, and uh, conservative Christians in this country are now in a paradox or a predicament. I think that's why you see such a, uh, well, you, you know, it'd be called by those who don't like it, the rise of the new Christian right or uh, the, uh, the awakening of uh, the Christian vote in the United States. Well, there's a reason for that. The rise of the new Christian right is called Christian nationalism by some. The belief that America was founded as a Christian nation and that the government should keep it that way. Blurring the line between church and state. We need to be the party of nationalism and I'm a Christian and I say it proudly, we should be Christian nationalists. The church is supposed to um, direct government, not the opposite yeah. uh, way. The church is supposed completely. to influence government and, yeah. and, and we need to be so involved in what is going on in our government. That's right. This group of people does not see an issue with the union of church and state and they say loudly and boldly that it is their goal to bring God into government. But most people don't really know what that really means and where all of this is heading. 
An example of what's coming can be seen in this reporter's reaction after attending a Christian nationalist meeting. Where are my Christian nationalists at in this room? Thank you. This is the Reawaken Tour, a traveling roadshow attracting tens of thousands of people as it crisscrosses the nation. You cannot separate God from politics. You can't take him out of our government. On the sidelines, hundreds of people queued to be baptized by water and by the Spirit. This really feels like a church service. And it's felt like a church service several times today, but then again, it felt also like a political rally. So it's both. I mean, I've never really seen such a mixture of religion and politics. I hope you're picking up what she's laying down. She said that she has never seen such a mixture of religion and politics. And this is precisely what Revelation 13 prophesied would take place when it stated that an image to the beast would be established. John was able to see almost 2,000 years ago a mixture of religion and politics, a union of church and state, and the rise of Christian nationalism. As he said, there would be a nation that looks like a lamb, meaning a Christian nation, but speaks like a dragon, which translates to coercion and mandates. So, what is the ultimate goal of this group of people? Where do they think things should go in this country? The answer to that question is pretty simple and was expressed in an interview from the same BBC documentary. Yeah. But I think God's gonna come down and he's gonna make things change. And when you've taken the country back, mm -hmm. what is that gonna look like? Um, I think it's gonna look good because you you'll have God back in the, in the government, you get God back in the schools, you get God back you get the Ten Commandments. Think about living by the Ten Commandments. None of our kids even know the Ten Commandments. That's right. The belief is that in this country, we should be living by the Ten Commandments and that this will make society a better place for all of us. But it's important that we ask ourselves a very important question. Whose version of the Ten Commandments is he talking about? And how would that even be legislated? During the pandemic, we heard a lot of talk about doing things for the greater good of society or more specifically, mandating things for the good of society. The idea of the common good is now driving the post-liberals' desire to implement Sunday blue laws in society, which, as I already said, will eventually lead to mandated worship. Take this statement from a recent article entitled, The Post-Liberals' Fight for the Weekend. In this article, the author states that a campaign for the Sabbath can bring together labor unions, religious conservatives, and small business owners. That last group historically opposed abolishing blue laws for lack of ability to compete. Can any other issue unite three core constituencies of the new right quite like the Sabbath? And by the Sabbath, they mean Sunday. And in another article entitled, Some Notes of Caution About Reviving Blue Laws, it says that post-liberals have begun to offer concrete policy proposals that would instantiate their agenda for the common good as they see it. Two of the leading men of the post-liberal movement were referenced from the American conservative as advocating a return to blue laws, which mandate that businesses close on Sundays in honor of the Christian Sabbath. Now don't miss what he said. He's essentially saying, that in the post-liberals' opinion, Sunday blue laws should be part of their political agenda for the common good. As I already mentioned, during the pandemic, there was a certain thing that was mandated, and it is so important that we understand why the spirit of coercion connected to those mandates are so relevant to the spirit of coercion that we're going to see in the future related to these Sunday blue laws. So, what did we see? surrounding the so-called common good as it related to COVID and the connected mandates. How can this help us understand what will happen in the future? What we saw was a society that was scared to death and was more than willing to trample on the freedoms of others for what was perceived to be best for society. Based on the statements from the great controversy, when people eventually get scared enough about the calamities that will continue to take place with more and more frequency, they will then demand that Sunday observance should be strictly enforced. In other words, mandates. The future process of mandating Sunday observance will look like this. There will be turmoil in the world. There will be calls for mandates. Then buying and selling will be restricted. And finally, there will be calls for corporal punishment. Now let's pause here for a moment. Despite these threats, if we are faithful to God, we have this promise right here. On page 631 of The Great Controversy, it says, the heavenly sentinels, faithful to their trust, continue their watch, 
though a general decree has fixed the time when the commandment keepers may be put to death, their enemies will in some cases anticipate the decree and before the time specified will endeavor to take their lives. Now don't miss this. But none can pass the mighty guardians stationed about every faithful soul. Some are assailed in their flight from the cities and villages, but the swords raised against them break and fall powerless as a straw. Others are defended by angels in the form of men of war. That promise is very precious to me, and I hope it will be for you as well, as we're at the beginning stages of great changes in our world. The Ten Commandments that were mentioned by that man in the BBC documentary will include pushing for the legislation of Sunday rest, for God and for country. This will be a process that plays itself out over time. It's going to start with quiet calls for change. It's going to start with sentiments like this right here, with people making a case for why post-liberals should pursue it. And by it, he meant Sunday Blue Laws as a concrete campaign in 2022 and beyond. I have no idea exactly when, but eventually we will hear this on campaign trails, discussed as a way to unite an increasingly divided society, discussed as a way to stop the calamities in the world, a way for us all to take one for the team, for the benefit of the common good. The Christian nationalists are getting serious about taking the reins of society. And as one of their leaders puts it, You ain't seen an insurrection yet. You God-hating communist America, you'll find out what an insurrection is because we ain't playing your garbage. We ain't playing your mess. My Bible says that the church of the living God. And as another extreme Christian nationalist puts it, We are the Christian Taliban. This is, this is the era of Christian nationalism. The Christian Taliban. I wonder what that would look like. With rhetoric like this becoming more and more commonplace, it's getting easier to see how freedom of conscience will be threatened. There is an increasingly defiant attitude to take this country back for God. This is God's nation and nobody is going to take it away from him. That's right. Now, I want to get that clear right now in the name of Jesus, no man, no woman, no Democrat, no Republican, no socialist, no communist can take this nation away from God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, I don't know what there is about that you can't understand, but I'm telling you right now, God Almighty is head of this nation, not people. Jesus of Nazareth is Lord over the United States. Now just settle that. And there is also an increasingly defiant attitude towards the true Sabbath. Trying to tell people Jesus is going to come next week, I'm going to ask you to leave because I ain't fooling with your Jehovah's Witness, Seventh-day Adventist, law-abiding nonsense. I ain't messing with it. And let me just go one step further for all these seven-day Adventists that watch me for some reason and send me letters. You worshiping the devil because you meet on Sunday. Jesus fulfilled the law. Jesus became my Sabbath. And I'm here to tell you, I worship on the first day of the week because of the glory of the resurrection. I am not under the law of the Sabbath. Jesus said there will come a day. It doesn't matter when and it doesn't matter where, but it matters who you will worship. I'm telling you, Saturday worship as far as the law is concerned, is a demonic doctrine. Shut up and don't come at me with all that nonsense. You got to worship on Saturday because of the law. I'm not under the law, Scipio. These sentiments are getting more pronounced by the minute. This will be the same spirit used against those who choose to refuse Sunday mandates and remain faithful to God and the true Sabbath. Now that the media is catching up to what was written by John the Revelator almost 2,000 years ago and written in even more detail by Ellen White over 130 years ago, I can assure you that the credibility of the Bible and the spirit of prophecy will continue to increase exponentially. And the time is now for us to bring these truths and principles to the masses before the real test comes. On January 8, 2021, two days after the Capitol riots, we highlighted the involvement of Christian radicals in those riots in our first episode of The Prophetic Eye. At the time, the media was focused on Donald Trump, but those of us who have the prophetic eye and understand Revelation 13 could clearly see the deeper significance of what was taking place in those riots as we saw the Jesus save signs throughout the crowd. 
If you would like to understand this topic in greater depth, or if you just need a reminder, then I want to invite you to take a look at some of our other videos on this topic, and we've placed the links in the description below. If you watch these videos, you will see how quickly the ideology of Christian nationalism is continuing to rise, and how cancel culture will eventually be used to cancel those that reject the Sunday laws that people like the post-liberals will eventually legislate. Society is showing its hand, and God is counting on us to be a voice of reason in an increasingly unreasonable society. Something is bubbling here, folks, and we need to be watchful. So if you've been enlightened, blessed, challenged, whatever the case may be, if you think that what you've seen has value, then remember to share with others. The fact of the matter is that God, he's a God of freedom of conscience, and each and every one of us should promote that principle to the best of our abilities because it's becoming clearer that things are wrapping up quickly and people need to see what you see. Don't forget that if you remain faithful to God, he will remain faithful to you and none can pass the mighty guardians stationed about every faithful soul. God bless and remember to keep the prophetic eye.